Hi everyone, Paul from emailables.co.uk. Uh, welcome to part 6 of our 132 Tamiya F4U build. Um, this we were at last time, everybody's seen where we were at. We buttoned up the fuselage, got it all filled, uh, sanded, anything that needed rescribing was done, which wasn't much to be fair. Very, very good, very good kit. Um, very happy the way that's turned out. So today, as I said, we're going to be concentrating on the engine. Now, I did say I was hoping to get this in one part. I don't think we will because I had a good look through the instructions. I'll start a little bit of this off camera, which I'll get to in a minute. But if we go to the overhead view, this is where we're going to start today. This is where we finished up our last time, just there, buttoning everything up. So today we need to do exhausts, this bulkhead, um, which then gets put in situ. This has all been done because we skipped ahead and got this last time. So this needs to be put in situ at the front of the fuselage. Um, this I've actually glued together, I'll show you in a second. That is then glued over the top, securing that part in place. So what it entails is these uh, several exhaust parts, which I got just here. If I get them for you. So we've got four parts. They were six. They've been glued together. So if I put them in sections for you so you can see. So these are those two there. And these are those just there. So what also needed doing, if I can find the part, we've got the rear bulkhead, which is this. Now off camera, I prime this in Alclad gloss back base. I then sprayed it in uh, Alclad 2 Jura, uh, sorry, Jura aluminum. Um, gives a nice effect. I didn't want it too shiny, but obviously I still wanted it to be noticeable through. I don't even know if you'll see it, to be honest. I assume you will. Um, so that's that part ready for these. As you can see, these are glued in position on top. Um, if we just skip ahead a little bit, there's this front fuselage part. I push that up there. Is this? Uh, we have to choose the appropriate top section of the cowl. We're doing the C variant of this to tritone, and this calls for this. This is glued in position like so, and then that is placed on top of the exhaust uh, cowling. Sorry bulkhead just there so that's those parts what I've done um, if I will skip ahead a little bit and I'll come back so this is the reason why I don't know I'm going to get it done today uh, because we've got a hell of a lot to do so the engine may be in two parts it may be part six and part seven because we've got the front side of the cylinder and then the rear side and as you can see you've got two halves basically then need to joined together with all the various ancillary components, generators, distributors, gearbox onto uh, the reduction gearbox, then the intake and exhaust pipes, which then leads on to the second part. So you're basically building two of these essentially. Um, we then move on to attaching them together, all their cylinder head covers, and then attaching the front cowling and the cowling flap um, which then gets it to this situation with more intake or exhaust looks like exhaust to me and then attaching to the actual fuselage so we've got a lot of work to get done there so i said it'd be a longer video today this is probably going to be at least 40 minutes long today i'll get as much done as i can today uh, and then we'll come back it'll be after christmas i'm not going to lie because we're not that far off now um it's 14 today i think so I get as much done as I can today, but we have got a lot to get through there. Because not only is it, you know, building it, we've also got to paint it, detail it, you know, there's a lot of steps. This is a grey in here, metal finish. Um, then we've got these various parts, these are painted in, I think it's grey again, black and silver, yep. Uh, and then all the other individual parts you painted, so there's a lot of steps to do. And I, you know, I can't cram it all into 50 minutes is the maximum length I'm going to do in these videos, because they are large files in 720p. HD. Um, so we'll go back to where we were. So what I've done on these parts, I've left one that I was going to show you guys, which is the one that needs doing. It must be that one. Yep. So I don't know if you guys can see, there's the exhaust as it comes out the box. So it is semi hollowed. It does give a good bit of detail. So I've got all the alclad all over me, as you can tell, I've been painting and priming. This one I drilled out as I have with these other three. So as you can see it gives a bit more depth in there and a bit more interest. So all I did 
was pin vise. Uh, it's about a one millimeter ne uh, needle, <laughs> a one millimeter uh, bit, and we're literally. I'll do it on camera for you guys. Place it in, rest it up against the back, but don't lean it on it because it'll mark it. And it's just slowly, we're keeping the pressure downwards that way so we don't slip out the side. And just very slowly, we start to open it up. Once you've got a couple of turns, go back on it, and you'll find it'll take off all the little bits of swarf of plastic and what have you. Again, make sure you keep that pressure backwards. I'm literally pushing that way so that it doesn't pop out the side at the front. Keep going, it doesn't have to be deep. Just to give it enough depth to show that it is a hollow tube rather than just being. A fake front, so there you go. We're drilled into there now, and that's the same as all the others. So, adds a bit more interest. Obviously, these exhausts are going to be seen from underneath the aircraft, um, so it is nice to add a bit of depth. There's a little bit of plastic swarf in there, I'll move in a bit of a reaming tool, but these need to be painted. I'm going to follow the instructions. Um, it's XS56, which is um, Tamiya's metallic grey, and XS7, which is Tamiya's flat red. It's a ratio of 1 to 5 red to gr uh, metallic grey. I will f use their paint because it's an exhaust colour. I'll see what it mixes up like. Um, we'll get that painted. Once that's all painted, that can be attached to this. Uh, weathering wise, um, I'm probably not going to bother doing anything because all we'll probably see is the tips coming out the bottom. I'll see what we can see. I'll, I'll skip forward a little bit in the steps, see what we can see. Uh, and I might add a little bit of um, weathering to it to see what it looks like. So there we go, they're all drilled out. They've been, these parts were in two. So they've been glued just there. So they need a little bit of tidying up using um, polishes and sanding sticks. So once that's done, I'll then go to the spray booth, paint those up in that Tamiya uh, color mixture. I'll do that off camera because like I said, we've got a lot to get through, and it's only a small step, it's not really worth me taking the camera over there just to paint these components. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll make a start on this. So I'll go paint those, we'll come back and we'll make a start on the cylinders. Okay, so I've cut off all these engine parts we've talked about before. Uh, we're going to deal with step 23 and 27 to begin with. So it's the front and the rear side cylinders. Um, they're both identical-ish uh, with regards to the cylinders themselves. Uh, these parts, the only difference is the front part, the front cylinder, has uh, this single ring here. So they need to be painted in various colours, so I'm going to have to glue it all together, let it set, and I'm going to figure out how I'm going to paint it. Thinking ahead, if we go to overhead cam, I'm probably going to... Paint it entirely in the alkali colour, which would be the equivalent of XF16, which is Tamiya's. Uh, hang on, yeah, XF16, so it's a flat. Uh, it's a flat aluminium, sorry, yeah, I got confused with X11. Um, so I'll probably do this in a flat aluminium colour, then mask off each cylinder if that's possible. It is, it's going to be time consuming. Um, and then spray the XF66, which is a light grey colour. Um, same on this, this is light grey, as too is the centre of here. These are black and they're silver as well, so there's quite a bit of masking required there. It's the same on the rear side as well, um, exactly the same bar that single ring. So, what we'll do, we'll have a look at the parts. So, these are all the parts this is the rear side, and this is the front side components. Um, I've cleaned them all up, they've all been sanded, uh, polished, uh, anything removed that shouldn't be there. The fit's quite good. I'll just pop it together like, get the right way. It only goes on one way and it's sounds all right, I go the wrong way. So we spin it around like so. There we go, so that's how it goes together. The detail's really nice on those cylinder heads. Uh, you can see the cooling fins if I get right up so you can have a look. See my hands are covered in primer. So the detail is quite good. 
the seams, again, any gluing, not clamping, but just moving in the correct position. They just they slide back and forth a tiny, tiny amount. You just need to get it right, and it loses most of that seam. So what we'll do is we'll pour a few dabs of Tamiya Extra Thin in position. We'll start gluing it together. So I'm just going to very quickly move my camera back a little bit because I need to see what I'm doing. I want to keep you guys in shot as well. So like I say, a little bit of forward back movement. I'll get us hopefully removing most of that scene. This is going to be a case of do a couple at a time, just hold them for a second, the white bounce is going on my camera a little bit. Hold a little bit of a time. Just take that out and get it back. We're going to go again. Once you're happy that that's got a bit of purchase on it, move to the next one. Obviously, ensuring as always, you don't got too much glue, especially if extra thin, because it does run everywhere if you make a mistake. periodically give it a slight press and I'm going to try and slide it the way I want it which is about there so it's just a case of going around getting everywhere you need to where we glued up to there that'll be the same on the back I won't show me doing the back because that's going to be boring as hell and what I'll do, once I've got all the tops done, I'll get some glue down the sides, let it all dry and give it a buff off with a polishing sponge to get rid of any dry glue marks and what have you. But it fits quite well. So all I need to do now is get in between each one of these cylinder heads and get a bit of glue in there. So I'll do that off camera, we'll come back once it's all dried, polished up and we'll start getting some paint down. Okay, so it's probably oh, about an hour or so later now. All the parts uh, have dried. Here's one of the um, cylinder heads. Um, let it dry, gave it a buff over with one of our Ultimate Modeling Products uh, buffers. This got rid of all the glue marks. I've then, as you can tell on my fingers, I've been priming. Uh, primed it in alkaline gloss black base. Which is give a nice shiny surface which will apply the alkaline on next. What I plan to do is I'm going to spray the cylinder heads on both uh, the front and rear uh, part in probably just an aluminium colour. Maybe a dull aluminium, I'll see. Uh, I want to put some various tones. I don't have a can, I don't have a can to be honest. So I'll spray all the cylinder heads in aluminium alclad, then I'll mask each cylinder head where it joins the actual uh, body of the motor in the middle. Uh, once they're all masked off, I'll then spray the centre in, uh, I think it's XF56, was it 66? 66. Uh, and then remove the mask, so we'll leave the uh, NMF finish at the top, and I'll like it at the bottom, so that's how I'll do both of those. So we'll go to the spray booth next, and we'll get some alclad down on that. We then got the reduction gearbox, which has been sprayed in our uh, sorry AK grey primer. We've literally just finished spraying this, so it, it's not wet because it does dry very quick. AK primer, I find it a lot better than Vallejo. It's a lot harder wearing as well. I know there's a few problems of AK at the minute, but I believe Mig himself has taken his new brand Ammo, and the company that produced this primer has gone to Mig, so you'll still be able to get this primer just under a different name. So this is ready to go for the XF66. Uh, a few of the parts on top, new paint in black and colours picking out, a bit of dry brushing on there and obviously when that's dry I put a wash on and what have you, so that's ready to go. All the other parts, um, 
are on various uh, tweezers, so they're primed in AK Grey Primer 2, so they're ready to be sprayed excess uh, 66 again, and then the centres need picking out in black and the tips in a metallic aluminium colour. So, the only other part left is this, I'm, I've no idea where it is, I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> It's a strange part, but that's primed in AK Grey Primer 2. It's the front part of the front uh, cylinder, uh, and that gets sprayed in, I think it's Tamiya XF66, yep, F S XF66 2. So they're ready to go. I'm so going to leave these now for half an hour. The AK is dry already, as too is the Alkalide. You can see them all on my little Tamiya paint stand. This is where I use this for, not for putting models onto paint, but parts. The little holes and clips are very handy for this. Um, the Alkalide is dry dries almost instantly as to is the AK but I'm gonna let them cure for about half an hour or so then I'll come back we'll go to the spray booth we'll get some alkyd aluminium down on the cylinder heads and some Tamiya or equivalent I'll probably use Mr Hobby an equivalent colour to go down there as well so we'll be back in a few short minutes and we'll get sorted okay so we're over at the spray booth now I've got the parts that you've seen just before this segment uh, they've dried now for at least an hour um, Alkalad gloss black base for the Alkalad aluminium finish. We're going to be putting on the uh, cylinder heads. So we've got two sets of these to do in this. And then we've got an equivalent grey to the Tamiya XF66, which will be Mr. Hobby H53 neutral grey for all the other parts. So that's where we're at now with this. So what we'll do first is I'll run through spraying the Alkalad on the uh, cylinder fins. Uh, and then we'll spray a little bit of the grey and then I'll do the rest off camera just so we're not lingering around too much spraying. So for this we're going to be using, as I always do for my Alclads, I've got my Eyewater Revolution. Uh, 0.3 needle if I remember right. Needle size got nothing specific to do with the reason I use it for Alclad. It's just a very easy to clean airbrush. Um, it's a pain to take to bits to clean but to back flush the wide clean Alclads it's very very quick. So. For Alcant it's perfect, for acrylics it's a little bit more uh, work involved than my evolution to clean. This is a lot simpler to clean than this if you're doing a strip down clean. So that's my choice for this, for using Alclads. So like I say, 0.3 needle, that's no reference to the Alclads, it doesn't make any difference to that the needle is. It sprays just fine for a 0.2. So like I say, we're going to use Alclads aluminium. So good shape, you need a ball bearing in, although they have learned that some of them don't have ball bearings in, which is a bit daft because it helps mix it, mix, mix it a lot better. And we're going to pour a small amount into the colour cup, which is clean, as we can see. That goes a long way, and it always, nearly every single time, Spills over the front. I know a lot of people say use pipettes, but too much bucking about. I prefer to just pour it in. Very careful you don't knock it over. I've just done that recently, spilling Alcalab Primer on one of my models. Um, so there you go, you can see how much in the colour cup. Not a massive amount. Make sure we pull it through properly. And let's give a good couple of pulls back. Put the booth on because this stuff cellulose based absolutely reeks. I'll just shout the book everyone out. So we've got one of the cooling, dead cool fans, one of the cylinder heads, um, two sets of these. So basically, 12 psi we're at. I found out the optimum spray and pressure. And first of all, as we go around, and lightly dust everywhere, including the top and getting down the sides. So I'm spraying it right down into the edges of the cooling fans. We are literally just going for a dusting cover. Back the opposite way. We're just trying to get down the edges of those cylinder heads. So we're happy. We'll give it another quick go around. We'll turn it around the back, do exactly the same. So we are not trying to cover it in one go. This alcohol paint is super, super thin. Trying to get a good surface down. I know a lot of people seem to struggle painting with this, but I find it one of the easiest paints to paint with. Uh, very easy, very quick to clean up. 
very easy to spray. Really is no problem whatsoever in my opinion. I find it easy to paint the most acrylics, if I'm honest. And there we go. So, quick, simple, plus free. I've been using Arcars for a couple of years now. First time I tried them, I've never looked back. Nothing comes close to the metal finish these leave behind. Uh, the only close second I like uh, acrylic wise is Citadels. Uh, once them properly, they uh, rush really nice. So, if I was going for an acrylic finish, I'd choose Citadel. Um, but for me, nothing comes close to an Alphard finish. So, I'll try and keep this one horizontal so you can see it on camera going on. So all we've done is give it a light dust all around the top and then we're getting in between each one of those vents, uh, fans, fans, fins. Go one way, then the other, flipping it over and do the other side. Yep, there's one colour cup gun. I managed to get to remember how to spell it this time, which is really good. So you can see just how little my spare time, you can see that cloth in front of me. That's literally how much is coming out of my brush as I paint barely anything at all. Just a small amount, you just keep going around, building it up until you've got the finish that you want. Because the cellular just dries really, really quick. It's a real nice finish. And there we go. Um, I wouldn't recommend pouring it back in the bottle, and I will do that with 90% of the paint I've got, um, just to save a bit while I'm wasting it. So, clean out as much as you can with a cloth. The rest of it into a uh, dispenser. I've got an airbrush cleaning pot just next to me. Give it another wipe out. Because it's cellulose based, you need cellulose thinner. Good sprinkler that in. Different brush to what you use on your acrylics. Some paints like to have a layer model air. Uh, extra acrylics do not like cellulose at all. Hence why I have different airbrushes for different paints. So it's a case of keep them away and don't let them mix together because it'll make an absolute gooey mess. Like I said before, a bit of a backflow. Tip of that away. Give it a wipe again. Spray everything out and it'll be 90% clean. A little bit more cellulose thinner. Backflow again. A little bit of scum in there, nothing bad. We'll vent that away totally. Once it's done, drop a two of cellulose, keep it in there, and clean the rest of it off. Simple, quick, easy, fuss free, no problem, leaving a fantastic finish. If we grab that and have a quick look, uh, we go to the side camera first, you can get a bit of a light on it. 
you can see there the metal effects rather good. Here's the overhead. Again, gives a nice effect. Nice finish. Let's move that around a little bit so we get a bit more light. Really is hard to replicate with other paints, in my opinion anyway. Other people have different techniques for doing it, but for me, that's the way I do it. So now we'll pick the biggest part, which is the I think it's a redux, transfer reduction box, is it? And we're going to go to a different airbrush. We'll go to one of my hardest steam backs. The evolution I've got. We'll give it a quick clean out. A little bit of UMP cleaner. Bit of a backflow. Now I've found Mr. Hobby and Tamiya aren't really too fussed by cellulose thinner. So there's no real problem really getting this to mix together. The likes of Vallejo, especially Vallejo Primer and Extra Pillage cannot stand up, this turns to a gooey gooey mess. So get the brush nice and clean. So like I said, we're using Mr. Hobby Neutral Grey. Quick shake, a little bit in the cup, pop that to one side, brand new bottle this one, so we're going to have a bit of a wipe, try and prolong its unmessiness for some time. Bit of ultimate modeling products, thinner, absolutely love our thinner, uh, produced by myself and Lee, works with every acrylic paint, I've tested every single one and they all work perfectly. So we're probably around a 50-50 mix. Give it a quick stir of a stirrer. Bit of a test. So for me, I can tell it's thin enough when I can write my name. Nice and thin. That'll do me. So once you're happy, make sure you pull the paint right through. See how we get, like I say, turn the pressure up because we're running a 12 psi. There we go, we're at 25 psi. Should be a bit better this time, actually. Here we go, nice thin lines. So I always judge. Nice and thin. So spray booth on again. Mr. Hobby, he's not as uh, noxious as cellulose, but still does have a nasty fragrance to it. And obviously because we've already primed in grey, there's not much of a colour. Differentiation, you could probably leave it primed in grey, nobody's ever probably know. I would do it, so I'm not going to leave it. Really do like these Mr. Hobby paints, they smell, they spray really smooth, leave a real nice finish, dry nice and quick. Uh, so much so I've stopped using Tamiya now. I absolutely love these, and especially with our thinner, works absolutely perfectly. I know it's my own product, but damn, uh, we held that straight away. So there we go, one part uh, painted, great, we've got a few others to do. Just cut to air a bit and dry it off. There we go, touch dry. See me touching that. No problems, no fingerprints, nothing. So I'm going to paint all the rest of these. Then we'll come back over on the desk, uh, workbench, we'll hand paint a few parts and we'll get some sections put together. Okay, so everything's now dried overnight and it's next morning now. So we've got the outclad cylinder heads on both. So they're both there. And we've got the reduction gearbox there as well. So this is in a neutral grey as two of these parts here. I now need to spray everywhere. I take these off, you can see the various components. So we've got, I don't know, I pretend to know what the parts are because I don't know what every part is, but there's several components. The fit is that good, it's actually hard to remove the parts and they won't fall off of their own accord. So 
does make it a little bit tricky to get the parts back off but it just shows you the quality of the kit and the quality of the parts because they are a nightmare to get back off there we go I always like to test fit if I can to see how we go um, these ones are a little bit easier he says as they stick on so there we go let's see we've got neutral grey in those parts and then these are first now cut. So what we need to do now is mask off each cylinder head uh, right down to the base. So each one of these uh, all the way around and then the very bottom and the center of this is then sprayed in the same grey as these. Um, so basically it's this we're doing here. So this is all in, um, Tamiya says to use XF16 which is Tamiya's flat aluminium. I just use our clad aluminium on there uh, and once we're done I'll add a, a acrylic, <clears throat> most probably an acrylic black wash to dull it down a little bit. So we need to mask off each one of these which is going to be fun um, to allow this neutral grey on both sides. Then on each one of these, and there's four, the centre rod needs to be painted in um, semi-gloss black and the tip and the base in a silver. So for that I'll probably use Vallejo model colour, uh, glossy black and put a tiny little bit of matting agent in there and then for the silver, to brush paint, uh, acrylic silver, I don't think you can beat um, Citadel's range of metallic paints. I've got the old Mithril silver, it's changed now to, is it Rumfang steel, something like that. Um, so they need to be brush painted. Uh, on here, the centre component here, which I believe is the generator. Yep, it is. Uh, again, needs to be in that semi-gloss black as well. And I think that's about it for picking colour out on this. We've got SX16 on these bolt heads here to pick out a bit of detail. And once that's done, again, it'll be given a... I'm thinking an acrylic wash, I'm not sure. I may go with my normal thinned Tamiya XF1. Mm, we'll see what it looks like. So, masking off. We'll move these for now, we'll do those later. And we'll just concentrate on one of these. So like I say, we need to mask off right down the bottom of there. So for this, I'll be using a little bit of very, very thin masking tape. This is actually jammy dog tape. Um, brilliant stuff. Very, very handy. Always get rid of your first bit that's been swinging around in the breeze. Because it'll pick up all kinds of dust and dirt. And I found the best way of doing it is get one side first. Get it to stick, <clears throat> get it all the way around and you can reposition it as needed. So there you go, there's one part on. A pair of tweezers, grab it, make sure you guys are still in shot, which you are. Pop it up and over. Slide it down, make sure you are covered where you need to go. Back around the other side. Lay it down as you want it. Any excess you've got, like I've got just there, snip off. Tweezers again. Get that in position and bring the other piece around to meet. And there you go, mast. So that's one of those done. What I'll do, I'll knock this light off and you can see the proper metal for them because my craft, uh, my workbench lights, I've got like five on here. They are quite bright and they do tend to white out a bit of detail. So there you go, you can see the metal effect off the hour cloud. Very, very nice effect. Hard to replicate with anything else in my opinion. I know a lot of people swear by some of the humbrol. Metal coats, I uh, haven't used them personally, I'm not a fan of uh, enamels unless it's for weathering but for me that alkyl gives a superb finish as long as you do the surface prep it's a flawless finish, absolutely fantastic so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, hang on, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, oh god 20 of these to mask off, <coughs> it's going to be fun so then what we'll do is we'll get a bit of slightly thicker tape I will go for the thickest one time you do in a dispenser. 
same process Lob it around push it through and fold it over and there we go I better using a thinner tape actually looking at it but I'll do it just to show you guys, so I need that on each one and then the centre is just grey that was the best way I thought of painting because I would rather paint all this in alkyd rather than masking off the bottom half there so it would have been possible to do the other way to do it was to use a brush paint all the bottom um, but you don't get as good a finish as you do with an airbrush so for me I'll spend god knows how long masking this and um, once it's done we'll come back and get a paint on that so the time right now is half ten so let's see how long it takes me to do it and I'll come back once I've done ok so it's about an hour and a half later we're back, I've done other bits as well so I've not just been doing this these took about 40 minutes uh, not the neatest job in the world but all we're going to be doing is spraying the centres in neutral grey same as we did on the other parts um, I've hand painted the push rods so they've been done in Vallejo gloss black a little bit of matting to mat it down a little bit and the tips have been um, painted in Tamirex 11. I was going to use Citadel, but I thought for the little part it doesn't really matter. So the push rods are detailed up now. Um, the reduction gearbox, I've painted the distributor in the same colour that the push rods in. That's been dry brushed in Tamirex F66, which is the colour they recommended, ironically, for this. I didn't even realise that when I picked it up. Uh, I've also gone around and picked out all the um, bolt heads in Tamirex 11 just to give it a bit of detail and once this is done with this we'll give them a wash uh, I'm not sure to I may use a Citadel wash like a sepia because I don't think it needs a black wash so probably a brownish wash will do um, to get those detailed up um, so as you can see multitude of colours and what have you been used over the past hour and a half but these are what I wanted really so I'm going to take these over to the spray booth quickly spray them in the uh, neutral um, grey sorry just got a bit of excess masking tape that's appeared there no idea where that came from um, I'll paint these up we'll come back and we'll put a bit of a wash on them okay with all the masking removed on both cylinders um, we've got the nice matte grey centre now as around the um, Alcalad finish cylinder heads if you go to the overhead you can get a quick view of both so there we go all the parts fit in nicely I've dry fitted them obviously before I glue them in position um, Thought I did say I was going to build this out of the box totally, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more interest to these cylinder heads. So I've already pre drilled two holes there and there, I don't know if you'll be able to see them. So just there and there. And I'm going to actually add a bit of wire detail. So it's only going to go on the front cylinders. Um, I'm going to make it out of plus model lead wire. I've got all the different sizes of this. Uh, this is the 0.5mm. Um, so I've got a 0.5mm uh, drill bit in my pin vise and I'll just very quickly show you one how I did it so hopefully try and keep you guys in shot, quite hard for me to do because I'm not directly over it as I'd like to be so it's a case of placing it where I want it just drilling nice and slow so there's one and then the other one goes just there. So I kind of I can turn it so I can see it. So all you're doing is you get in the position where you want it, because this has got a swivel top. And then just turn it by hand slowly until it gets going. On this side it's hollow. There we go, so that's gone in. Just spin it back the opposite way. And there we go, two holes. So what we need to do now, we need to form a half round shape and for that we need to pick the appropriate size brush which I'm going to choose that one what we'll do is we'll wrap it around the handle a few times like so it's very very delicate, not very delicate but it's easy to snap so just take your time with the plus model ease it off and then we're going to snips We'll just cut off one piece there. What we're looking for is like a half 
circle shape like so tweezers hopefully this will fit roughly into the hole like so and there we go you can see that so just a little bit of wire detail into the cylinder obviously because it's lead wire it's nice and renewable so you can really move it around where you want it so I've got another 9 to do on this uh, I'm not going to bother on the back I don't even know if there are any um, wires on the back um, I'm not sure to be honest but I've seen somebody else do this I will admit on another build I thought it looked good so I had it myself uh, I may also add some ignition leads which come off this the bottom there um, and go to each single cylinder I'll see how I get on, um, we're running out of time today so I'm going to continue doing these, get them all in, find out why this fell out, actually fell out there, glue them on position and that'll be more than likely just done for today because we have got quite a lot of footage done. Um, so I'll go around, get all these in and then we'll come back and show them all done. Okay, so all the detail parts are uh, done, we've got all the extra wiring detail in, um, we've put all the push rods in. They're not glued in position, they're just rested in at the minute. As well as the um, ignition lead distributor. Um, I've added a sepia wash using Citadel's uh, Seraphim sepia. Uh, what I did, just literally brushed it on, wiped off the excess with a cotton bud, job done. That's given quite a nice effect, you know, oil and grime and what have you on there. Uh, add a little bit to the distributor, uh, the reduction gearbox as well. So this literally just pops on there like so and that's basically the front of the engine uh, this on the head's done so I'll probably get this a bit of a black wash as well when we come to doing the rest of the back part next time because um, we've run out of time today uh, so that's it really that's the front of the engine done. so we had a bit of detail a bit of wire uh, I'll add, I've drilled the holes ready for the ignition cables as well for next time um, so we'll get those in uh, in the next part so as you can see we've still got the rear part to do so I'll do that off camera ready for next time. The exhaust are done, they're glued in position, I said at the beginning of the uh, part. So they've been painting the tam colour Tamiya recommended. Uh, it's a bit too brown, but it's a metallic brown. Maybe I'll probably matte it down with a matte coat to dull it down a bit. Maybe put a few pigments on. To be honest, I think the only part you see is that anyway. And that's underneath the aircraft, and that'll be weathered. Um, exhaust stains will have you on it so see what you can actually see and we'll go from there but that part I think uh, where does that go into is it on the must be on another part I thought it was on the back of this it may well be I haven't looked forward in the instructions so that's us for today so we've added plenty of detail I'm quite happy with the way that looks uh, it'll look a lot better when we get some ignition leads in and we start getting it together so next part we will get all the engine together uh, just I knew as soon as I looked at those instructions this morning uh, I thought that's going to take quite a while to do, but never mind. So that was for part, I think it's six are we on? Um, so I'll be back after Christmas and New Year with part seven. And we'll get this engine completed. Um, as always, check out Emol's website. Everything you need on there. Full range of our clads is on there. Uh, I think they sell Citadel as well, I can't remember now. I'm not sure. Um, check out Emol's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And also check out internationalscalemodeler.com where this build can be found of all the videos and what have you. So, paulfemanos.co.uk, have a great Christmas. I'll see you in the new year. So, take care. See you soon.